Boo! Got him. Back from the dead. Uh, let's talk about video games at Halloween, because I like video games at Halloween. I'll try and keep this brief, because uh, I'm sure everybody is dying <laughs> to get back out there and, uh, and, and find razors in the Halloween chocolate due to the lack of trick-or-treating last year. It was a sad year for mums on Facebook. It's always super fun for us gamer boyfriend stereotypes with the bisexual goth girlfriend when game developers celebrate spooky month with the inclusion of spooky cosmetics, game modes, and map reskins. October was always my favorite time of the year to play Team Fortress 2. Each year they'd add new spooky maps set at the dead of night, decorated with pumpkins, featuring special bosses that were kind of glitchy sometimes, Halloween in minigames like bumper cars where the real horror is the whiplash you'll most likely experience. And although we all know that TF2 seen better days, it still seems like to me as an outsider who hasn't played the game properly in years, that Halloween is still a highly anticipated time of the year for the seven people that still play it. Why are you booing me? I'm right! The Halloween event items and cosmetics always gave the community something to strive towards, especially incentivizing furries. Oh, this better not awaken anything in me. But now for a completely unique segue that has never been attempted before, let's stop talking about TF2 and go check out this little game called Overwatch. I'm really sorry. I was obsessed with Overwatch when we were graced with their first Halloween update. I was in college, hadn't met my girlfriend yet, and made like four gaming videos a week. I pretty much spent my entire free time on that game. Me and my friends would constantly load into Junkenstein's Revenge, swapping out roles and seeing if we could unlock the horrendously difficult achievements, which um, I, I actually still haven't unlocked. But that's, just, that's besides the point. It truly felt like Overwatch was leaving TF2 in the dust, as if the comparisons weren't enough already. Even adopting their Man V Machine type gameplay in this wonderful new update, transforming playable characters into evil and fun new bosses, and introducing spooky map reskins and character skins, which made you say, <laughs> oh, well, I guess I'm spending 20 hours a day grinding for loot boxes. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I did get the Witch Mercy skin. Why are you looking at me like that? However, the OG game that we all looked forward to at Halloween, or any special holiday for that matter, was Club Penguin. Club Penguin Halloween! I don't even think that Dead by Daylight, an all year round horror game, celebrates Halloween the way that Club Penguin did. The early Halloween parties barely affected the island really, just kind of turning the nightclub into like, a Halloween school disco. Okay you groovy penguins, just a quick announcement to let you know, the Max 457, your mum is in the car park. But as the years went by, the parties expanded into island wide events, covering every location in pumpkins and turning pool water green, turning the entire iceberg into a pumpkin. It was always nighttime, they introduced candy hunts, there were spooky mazes and new locations, festive outfits, igloo items, creepy soundtracks, and most importantly, for us kids who couldn't afford a membership. That's right, baby. Free items. I finally had something to wear that wasn't a friendship bracelet. It was honestly so exciting logging on and seeing this bright and cheerful game suddenly become gloomy and spooky for a few weeks. And I know they were probably just trying to make the map look spooky and creepy, but honestly, the pumpkins being scattered throughout the rooms always gave the map this cozy vibe and got me in a Halloween spirit. Damn, I miss Club Penguin. In more recent years, I've fallen in love with the Crash Team Race and Remaster from 2019. I've also fallen in love with this Crash Bandicoot Duck. This incredible remake took the original PS1 kart racer and transformed it into something so much bigger. Introducing bi-monthly Grand Prix events, which included brand new tracks, new races from across the Crash Bandicoot series, also Spyro and Ganasty Ganork, loads of new cosmetics and more. It was honestly kind of cool. Including in these events was the Halloween Grand Prix, introducing a brand new spooky map called Nina's Nightmare, featuring oozing pumpkins and the haunted mansion of Dr. Cortex's niece, Nina. And if you're thinking, wow, they, they included characters from Twin Sanity? Well, they also included the TNT crate, so. Alongside this map introduced Halloween-inspired carts, characters, skins, challenges, cosmetics, goth Coco, and... Uh, which skin for Tana? Why'd you keep doing this to me? Speaking of Dead by Daylight, like three minutes ago, let's talk about Dead by Daylight. This year, Dead by Daylight are celebrating Halloween with the spookiest thing of all. NFTs. Oh, and a new survivor. I almost forgot about that bit. And this new survivor is pretty exciting because she's a witch named Michaela Reed. The Hour of the Witch update also introduced Boon Totems. It's a new way for survivors to use supernatural abilities to bless dull totems, 
and then use them to help heal and hide the scratch marks of survivors in close radius. And honestly, it's pretty cool to see them introduce a witch into the game in the form of a survivor rather than some stereotypical old hag-like killer with a pointy nose and boils. So this Halloween update also scatters smashable pumpkins throughout the maps. We a special 666. 666, six, six, blood points bonus. Festively spooky skins, a Halloween sale, which is also the last chance to get the Stranger Things content, and acts as a great distraction from Dead by Daylight NFTs. They could have at least made the NFTs good if they were gonna piss off the whole community about it. Now let's take this a little more old school. Uh, that's if people call the PS2 old school, which unfortunately I think they do now, and that depresses me greatly. Scooby-Doo in the Night of 100 Frights, or Scooba-Doo, as Twitter recently informed me was his real name. Why, why, does, why does Twitter do this? It was an absolute blast of a platformer featuring Mystery Incorporated being tormented by Tim Curry and his giant smile in the mansion. And although the game is already very Halloween appropriate with its spooky setting, graveyards and general Scooby-Doo mishaps with monsters and ghouls, the game also offered special holiday Easter eggs. If you set your console's date to Christmas, it was snowing. If you set it to New Year's Eve, there were fireworks. And there was also events for Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, and even the 4th of July. America. Ugh, fuck yeah. But of course, most importantly to us is that if you played the game on Halloween, there would be bats hanging around the courtyard. That, that's pretty much it, but I thought it was cool. And as a child without the internet to look these things up, this honestly blew my mind. And this also reminds me of the Calendar Man Easter egg from Batman Arkham City. Changing the date of your console, or, or just being really patient, and visiting the Calendar Man on a dozen specific dates throughout the year, unlocks new dialogue and progress towards the Storyteller achievement. And if you do visit him on October 31st, he talks about how redundant Halloween feels in Arkham, being surrounded by monsters all year round. Although it's pretty cool to hear him reminisce about the year Joker caused an outbreak, and how all the innocent partygoers in Gotham City just thought that they were in costume too. What a wonderful night. Costumed revelers innocently partying alongside killers and fiends. Some first person shooters like Destiny 2, Apex Legends, Warzone, like to celebrate Halloween with some spooky skins. That's right, in their first person shooter. People spend money on skins that they can't see. But hey, at least the other players get to enjoy being killed by Leatherface or Billy from Saw. Who gave Billy a gun? Or Ghostface. Credit where credit's due, Call of Duty Warzone has actually been cranking out some pretty cool Halloween content the last couple of years. I mean, from the people who brought us Call of Duty Zombies, you'd kind of hope so? I'm a Call of Duty shield that hasn't learned this lesson! Personally, I fell out of love with Fortnite when it skyrocketed in popularity. Is it like that? I like pretended I saw a skyrocket like, whoa! There goes Fortnite! <laughs> Bye! I unfortunately just about missed out on the original Skull Trooper skin when I first started playing Fortnite. I had tried it very briefly before Halloween, but it ran like 20 FPS on the Xbox. It was miserable. I kind of feel like a hipster saying that. Do, do people still say hipster? I... And speaking of Skull Trooper, of course, Fortnite fans were gutted when it made a return in the following year. You know, actually, I think most of the people upset about it were the people trying to sell their accounts with the skin on. That was a weird time. But the game has definitely embraced spooky season every year. Although Halloween doesn't just have to be about jump scares in Warzone loot boxes or zombie survival modes. It can also be about giving your goth girlfriend a lot of new accessories for her Animal Crossing Island. There's so many more games that celebrate Halloween in some way, shape, or form. Grand Theft Auto, Rocket League, World of Warcraft, Elder Scrolls Online, Minecraft, Fall Guys, Pokemon Go, just to name a few. And if you are a game developer who doesn't celebrate this time of year with spooky cosmetics, maps, game modes, or anything at all, just do better. This is a threat. This is a threat. As a certified enjoyer of Halloween and video games, this time of year is like our Christmas. Although I do love seeing Torby on a Santa. I swear every year Halloween comes and goes quicker than the last, but at least once Halloween is over, we've got the warm, cozy Christmas updates to look forward to. Now, it really is the best time of year. It's the best time of year, I don't know what to say. And not just because my birthday is on the 6th of December. Just a little reminder. I will be expecting presents. And that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry I haven't uploaded in like five months. YouTube editing is now my full job and when you do it for a job, it gets quite tiring to do it as a hobby. I also stream on Twitch. Yes, that's a zero and a wolf. I couldn't secure the username. I currently stream about three times a week. I play Dead by Daylight, Oblivion, Minecraft, Resident Evil, a few story games. Just, it's a good time. We have a good time. We partake in some tomfoolery. I've been Brody, otherwise known as Knockout Wolf. Like and subscribe and all that. And if you don't mind me, 
I've got to go ghost for another year. I'll see you later. Yo, did you see that? That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs>